A New York congressional candidate, a California-based artist, and the father of an Olympic figure skater. All alleged victims of an espionage scheme by the Chinese Communist Party. The Department of Justice has announced charges against five men. NTD's Chen Yi Wu has the story. The U.S. Justice Department announced charges on Wednesday against five men accused of stalking and harassing Chinese dissidents in the United States on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party. The defendants were allegedly acting as agents of the Chinese secret police, engaged in transnational repression schemes with China's Ministry of State Security, or MSS. Three of the defendants have been arrested, but the others remain at large. The alleged victims include a candidate for Congress in New York, a California-based artist, and the father of an Olympic figure skater. They weren't named in the complaint, but the description of the congressional candidate matches that of Yen Xiong, a Brooklyn resident. The DOJ detailed three separate schemes. In one of them, defendant Chi Min Lin allegedly hired a private investigator in New York to disrupt Xiong's campaign. Xiong had been a student leader of the pro-democracy demonstrations in Tiananmen Square in 1989. He later escaped to the United States, served in the military, and became a U.S. citizen. When hiring the private investigator, Lin explained that he and those whom he was working for did not want Xiong to be elected to Congress. Lin emphasized that whatever price is fine, as long as you can do it. Lin allegedly first asked the investigator to provide Xiong's phone number and address. He then asked the investigator to unearth derogatory information about Xiong, or if no such information could be found, to manufacture some, including by creating a scandal involving a prostitute. Later, Lin also asked the investigator to consider physically attacking him. In a voice message to the investigator, Lin stated, You can start thinking now. Aside from violence, what other plans are there? But in the end, violence would be fine too. Beat him. Beat him until he can no longer run for election. You think about it. Car accident? He will be completely wrecked, right? As these cases show, the MSS has been targeting pro-democracy activists living in the United States with harassment and smear campaigns, spying on them to help the PRC government target them for arrest. The Chinese Foreign Ministry on Thursday denied having carried out schemes targeting Chinese dissidents overseas, calling the allegations slander. The cases underscore what American officials describe as increasingly aggressive efforts by the Chinese regime to seek out, silence, and threaten pro-democracy activists abroad. And in what could be a historic development, Saudi Arabia is reportedly in talks to sell oil to China in a transaction that would be made in Chinese currency, the yuan. That's according to the Wall Street Journal, citing people familiar with the matter. Since the 1970s, the Saudis have only sold oil in exchange for American dollars. The deal allowed the U.S. dollar to remain the world's reserve currency. Today, 80 percent of the world's oil is traded for U.S. dollars. But dollar inflation is a problem for Saudi Arabia. Just like it now costs shoppers more dollars to buy products at the store, Saudi Arabia's U.S. debt holdings are now worthless and still falling. It's also not an ideal circumstance for China, because Beijing can't print dollars to buy oil like the U.S. can. China now buys 25 percent of Saudi Arabia's oil, and that number is rising. In comparison, the U.S. is only buying a fraction of the amount it did in the 1990s. Chinese regime's ambassador to the U.S. said China will maintain normal trade relations with Russia. That says Russia remains under heavy sanctions from the West. The sanctions aim to press Russia's Vladimir Putin to stop his invasion of Ukraine. This Sunday, CBS News asked the Chinese ambassador Qing Gen whether China will send military supplies and weapons to Russia. Qing said Beijing is currently not sending weapons and ammunitions to any party, but didn't pledge against doing so. His comment comes as Beijing is under fire for refusing to condemn the invasion. And multiple media outlets reported that the Chinese regime has expressed some openness when Russia asked for military aid. The New York Times reported last month that Chinese officials brushed off American concerns when Washington shared intelligence that Russia was preparing to invade Ukraine.
The U.S. asked China to help persuade Russia against the decision. But the Chinese regime turned around and shared American information with Moscow. In the CBS interview, Qing also claimed that Xi Jinping called Putin and asked him to think about resuming peace talks with Ukraine. This seems to differ from an earlier New York Times report. That article quoted U.S. intelligence officers saying that China told Russia not to invade Ukraine until after the Beijing Winter Olympics. Qing also scoffed at calls for Beijing to condemn Russia, saying it won't solve the problem. Chinese e-commerce giant Alibaba is taking action to prop up its tumbling share price. It raised its share buyback program to $25 billion on Tuesday. This comes as the company fights off Beijing's regulatory scrutiny and concerns about slowing growth amid the country's worsening virus outbreaks. The e-commerce titan said Tuesday that it would increase a planned share buyback to $25 billion. That's a record for the company. It's also the second time it's increased the buyback plan. Last year, it was boosted from $10 billion to $15 billion. Alibaba is acting after its share price cratered more than 50% over the past year. It's been under pressure since late 2020, when billionaire founder Jack Ma publicly criticized Chinese regulators. Watchdogs later slapped it with a record $2.8 billion fine for anti-competitive behavior, and halted a blockbuster IPO for its financial arm. Investors also worry about mounting competition and slowing growth. Now the firm says the decline doesn't fairly reflect its value and outlook. It's also hoping to sell into a rising market. Chinese tech stocks have been buoyed in recent days after China said it would take steps to support the economy. Alibaba's Hong Kong traded shares jumped over 11 percent following news of the buyback plan. A company may choose to buy its shares back for several reasons. One, to boost confidence in the company's overall health and outlook. And two, the move raises earnings per share. But how does Alibaba's move tie into the U.S. market? The company has been listed on the New York Stock Exchange since 2014 under ticker name BABA. Because of that history, American investors are involved too. Right now, Chinese regulators are reaching out to Alibaba and a number of other Chinese companies listed in the U.S., telling them to prepare for more audit disclosures. So far, Chinese authorities have refused to open those companies' books to U.S. regulators, citing national security concerns. The move comes as Beijing works to keep its domestic companies listed in New York. A U.S. Navy officer sentenced to four years in prison. Yang Fen is an ethnically Chinese lieutenant in the U.S. Navy. He purchased handguns for the owner of a Chinese defense company and hid his relationship with that company. This, according to the Justice Department. He and his wife allegedly received more than $300,000 from the Chinese company and parties associated with it. Yang was convicted last November and sentenced on Wednesday. Before his arrest, Yang held top-secret security clearance for the U.S. Navy. A DOJ statement explains Fang Yan held a position of trust with the U.S. government, working on anti-submarine warfare. The court held him accountable for violating that trust by lying to the government about significant foreign relationships.